streets of Grahamstown reverberated to the sound of this year's PG windscreen Settler 500 off-road race as the competitors made their way through the normally quiet and relaxed Settler town to the start of the first section. First away in the 80-kilometer Settler Sprint were the Class 5 vehicles with Bill Angus and Derek Weatherall, the first in the pack to get away. seconds behind Angus and Weatherall were Pitt Dupacy and navigator Sion von Kesselen, also in a Toyota Hilux. In class 6, driving a Nissan Safari were R.P. Reinecke and Lucas Dreyer. Missing from this class were Philip Malon and Hannes Krobler, leaving only three competitors in the class for this race. Koch and Dani van der Merwe made a fatal mistake shortly after the start. In their haste to catch Reineke and Dreyer, they took a wrong turn and wasted valuable time finishing 12 and a half minutes behind the flying Nissan. In class 8, there was a tough battle going on between Degener, Carolyn and Schilling. Here, Richard Schilling and Fred Levesque in their Chenet Magnum have the advantage of clean air as they approach the camera. Not far behind in their Raceco Kojima were last year's winners Bux Carolyn and Kenny Skoltama, who were catching the leading Class 8 pair. Eating their dust were the incredible Klaus Degener and Hilton Beatty, who were going even faster. Port Elizabeth driving ace Dion Jaber, together with navigator Wayne Pettit, caused a stir when he finished with the fourth fastest time in Class 8 in his owner-built Centaur. It was plain to see that he'd the bit between his teeth and nothing was going to stop him. The only disappointment of the day came when Robbie and Lofty Daisel rolled their sprinter. Robbie had to be rushed to Port Elizabeth with a badly broken arm bringing this year's race to an abrupt end for them. Linton Draper and Steve Fermark impressed in their Class 4 Nissan until they made a drastic error in negotiating the notorious Bandit's Pass and went careering 30 metres down the side of the hill. Grant Watkins and Keith Matthews also had a narrow escape when they lost a front wheel from their budger bug halfway down the pass. Good luck and the fact that they could not stop the vehicle even if they wanted to enabled Watkins to drive it down to the bottom where repairs could be done. Finishing in first place were Klaus Degener and Hilton Beatty, qualifying them to start first on the second stage of the race the following morning. Bearing testimony to the incredibly rough conditions, they averaged a speed of just over 50 kilometers an hour over the 80 kilometer course. Marginally slower in second position was Bix Carolyn and Kenny Skoltammer, only two minutes behind the leading pair. The four fastest times were as follows, with only seven minutes separating first and fourth. In off-road racing, this is not much when punctures and other mechanical problems can often sideline a competitor for quite some time. The weather had changed dramatically overnight, bringing a strong ice-cold wind in contrast to the previous day's hot berg wind conditions. At the start of the second section, three laps of 140 kilometers each, it was Klaus Degener and Hilton Beatty first away with Bux Carolyn and Kenny Skoltammer next to leave the starting grid. Behind them, Richard Schilling and Fred Levesque in their Chenneth Magnum were third away. Dion Jaber and Wayne Pettit left as the sun began to shine, but without much warmth. After only five kilometers from the start, Klaus Degener had gone missing, and Bix Carolyn found himself in the lead. 
Using this to his advantage, he increased his lead over Schilling and Levesque and set up the fastest time for the lap. Next to come through were Schilling and Levesque. The race was still in its early stages, and if Schilling took it easy without letting anyone overtake him, he could just win the race if Carolyn was slowed down with mechanical problems. Dion Joubert flew through this section, by far the fastest so far. But unfortunately, he broke a front wheel strut later in the race and was forced to retire without even completing the first lap. Wilfred Beslau and Dagmar Blanke were the most competitive entrants in Class 2. And in their VW Beetle, they were setting up lap times which were comparable with the much faster vehicles. In a VW-powered King Scorpion, Mervyn Woods blasted his way around the course to complete the first lap with the second fastest time and moved up eight places into third position overall. Klaus Degener was the first to break down shortly after the start and Ashley Thorne and Peppy Martin broke a CV joint in their Maluti Beauty Chenneth right in front of our camera position. Fortunately, they had a spare and 20 minutes later, they were back on the road again. Bandit's Pass was the last major obstacle to overcome before the end of the first lap. And it certainly is a major obstacle. On foot, it's very difficult to negotiate, but Bix Carolyn and Kenny Skolthammer had no intention of walking it. Next to be tested were Richard Schilling and Fred Levesque, who are now 12 minutes behind Carolyn and only 7 minutes ahead of Mervyn Woods, who is putting in a strong challenge behind them. Some drivers hold their breath at the top and only breathe again when they reach the bottom as they negotiate the treacherous pass. Woodsy was breathing hot air all the way down and soon Schilling would be feeling that same hot air on the back of his neck. Almost completed the first lap with no serious damage was a good omen for Selwyn Robinson and Donald Duck Broadhurst in their Class 7 Kestrel buggy. In 10th position overall and the first in their class, they were doing well. After a close shave on the first day, Linton Draper and Steve Vermark seemed intent on getting rid of their Nissan, even if it was piece by piece. Two hours due to mechanical problems on the first lap, Klaus Degener and Hilton Beatty were absolutely flying. On their third lap, they set up the fastest time of the race and finished in a creditable 11th position overall. R.P. Reinecke and Lucas Dreyer in their Class 6 Nissan Safari were also doing some low flying and at this stage, they were in 7th position. What happens when a vehicle is caught by a faster competitor on Bandit's Pass? This is, believe it or not, a gentlemanly sport, and Louis Primick allows a small gap for Vernon and Rennie Acton to squeeze past. At 
end of the second lap, and in second place overall, Morgan Woods had the misfortune of a puncture, which cost him valuable time. A faulty jack and flat spare lost him his second place. 26 minutes ahead of Woods, Bux Carolyn and Kenny Skoltammer were on their last lap. Barring any unforeseen problems, victory would be theirs for the second time. Capitalizing on Woods' misfortune, Alfred von Furen and Piet Pelser charged through into second place. The race had spread out now and they were more than an hour behind the leaders. Having lost an hour in the second lap, Richard Schilling and Fred Levesque put up the third fastest time on the last lap to secure fourth position overall, passing Wilfred Veslau and Dagmar Blanca on the way. From start to finish, Bix Carolyn and Kenny Skoltammer drove a magnificent race in their race co Kojima and finished over an hour ahead of Van Furen and Pelsa. Having grabbed second place from the sidelined Woods, Van Furen and Pelsa made no mistakes on their final lap and charged into the finish and the welcome sight of the chequered flag. Third place is better than nothing at all and Mervyn Woods was happy to finish where he did. A tough race, 20 out of the 44 cars that started the race finished, bearing testimony to the fact that the Settler 500 off-road race is one of the toughest of its kind in the country. The overall results were Bux Carolyn and Kenny Skoltammer first with Alfred von Furen and Piet Tulsa second. In third place was Mervyn Woods with Richard Schilling and Fred Levesque eight minutes behind in fourth spot. but well-organized race, enjoyed by all, especially those who managed to win their individual class races. They'll certainly all be back to defend their titles next year.